green at podcast. Hey. Ros was refusing to start the podcast, so I'm starting it. My name's Emily. I'm Ros. Uh, and welcome to an episode of our podcast. We haven't podcasted in ages and ages, for which I apologise. Um, yeah, it's all her fault. It was nothing to do with me at all. Yeah. But we're back now, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a huge amount of stuff, really, but we have some bits and pieces. Yeah. Given the amount of time we have not podcasted for. Like, if you'd spoken to me then, I'd have been like, oh, yeah, I'll have, like, five jumpers done by October. Um, but, yeah, as I say, it's now October, so it's cold. And, I mean, it was it has been the summer. Like, we last podcast at the beginning of July. So it's been the entire summer since then. I don't tend to do a lot of knitting big things in the summer because it's just too hot. But now it's fully autumn and October. Then um, everyone kind of gets their, their knitting love back again and everything gets moving um yeah so here we are and we will take you through some of the stuff that we've done over the last nearly four months i think it's longer than that i think i took a little while to get the podcast uploaded i think oh, we you? recorded it in june did we i think possibly <laughs> we're so good at podcasts um yeah do you want to start fly uh you can start all right, I've got a work in progress, which is not what I'm currently working on. So I'll show you what I'm working on anyway in just a second when I've done this stitch. I am putting some more sock yarns on my sock yarn crochet blanket, which I've been working on for a while now, a couple of years probably. So it's now pretty long. I mean, I've only added, since the last time I've shown, I've only added like from this pale sort of purpley few colours at the top, I think are kind of what I've added on. Yeah, so like this little, this little bit here from the just above that bright orange upwards is what I've put on this time. So it's only been a few rows so far. It's getting quite long. It's quite wide and blankety, so that's good. I have um, a whole load of new sock yarns that go along because I've knit quite a lot of socks. So I will add those slowly one at a time. As I said, I've said before, this is a project that I kind of take out and put back like as and when, like when I have a whole load of sock yarns that I've got bits left over of ready to go on, I'll pull the project out and add a few more ones and then it'll go away for a little while and then it'll come back out again so it's um and you tend not to bring it out when it's you know a heat wave because no. you don't want to sit with a woolly blanket no. on your lap so that's what i'm working on well that's not the work in progress that's on my bit paper my actual work in progress is a pair of socks that i'm doing from the toe up uh oh and i did the heel i was in, i'm in the process of uh i'm about to start the heel flap for this bit so i've done the increases so it kind of just looks a bit like a foot at the moment, but it's nice and autumnal. And this is Rosie Apple, by Rosie Apples by Crafty Cat Yarns, who is a local yarn provider of yarns um, to here. She doesn't live very far away. Um, yeah, so it's four ply merino nylon and sparkle. I don't know what percentage of, it's probably, it's usually 75 25 isn't it yeah although it could be like 70 25 5 or even less we don't sparkle know. but um yeah it's a nice autumnally color and i don't know if you can see very well but it does have little bits of gold sparkle in it but i don't know if you can see that on the pocket on the camera it is sparkly sparkle sparkle yeah you can kind of see it so i'm just doing a pair of toe up socks from the sock from the toe up book um, I don't think the heel that I'm doing is the one from there though because I got that one off the internet because it was a slightly different one that I found a bit easier. That's what the rest of it looks like in a nice bowl. And um, this is from Luby Lou Yarns who has opened a new shop around the corner mm. from me which is excellent. It was a yarn shop, it was called something else for a little while um, and then it closed in May and then Luby Lou Yarns who have a shop in another town not too far from here decided to come back to that shop because they had previously owned that shop in the past before I lived here um, and now they've opened it again so now we have a new yarn shop around the corner uh, that also sells spinning stuff and things and plants, good. And plants. thumbs up yes. so that's good I can go buy yarn on a whim whenever I feel like it uh, but this is the first sock on here so I'm still working on my first one but it's nice it's autumnal as I say you get the you get the autumnal colorway feeling that's what you all the it, autumnal socks yeah you'll see quite a lot of my socks that I finished so that's this sort of autumny 
watch me sock colour. But that is my only work in progress at the moment. Because uh, I finished a pair of socks like two days ago, that's why. So, that's good. I'll probably cast on another one at some point in the not too distant future. Uh, right. In fact, I will need to cast on another one because I'm getting the bus somewhere on Thursday and it's easier to knit a one in the round on the bus because you don't have to concentrate quite so much. So I might cast on a new sock of some kind. Right, that's all I've got for work in progress at the moment. Okay, I am also knitting a sock. Um, this is, it's my only work in progress that I have to show because I didn't bring all my other works in progress because um, I'm daft and I forgot. So this is a sock. It is almost about ready to begin with the toe. It is opal sock yarn. I think this is called ice cream or ooh ice or something. It's I don't know what I've done with the label. It's uh, opal, so it's like the proper name is in German. But it surprised me because it doesn't look. It's showing up slightly more vibrant on the screen, but it's not an ice creamy colorway to me. That looks more like actual ice than ice cream, like glaciers and lakes and stuff. Anyway, uh, two and a quarter millimeter needles, and it's yeah, just my basic plain sock, not ribbed on the the foot or the leg. Um, there's not really a lot more to say about it. It's a it's a sock, and uh, I'm also knitting other socks, but I didn't bring them, so you can't see them. They're secret socks. Yeah, okay. I mean, they're not that secret, but you know, I forgot to bring them, so let's pretend there's some intrigue. So do you finish objects while you're on a um, on a roll? Yes, I finished two objects as far as I can remember. Um, where are they? Do you not have them to hand? Well, they're right here. <laughs> Preparation, <clears throat> kids. I mean, they were right here, but I just can't reach over all the amount of stuff I've got on the side of the sofa. Okay get them. We're still out of practice for the, um, the podcast. I finally finished, if I remember showing last time, my dad's Father's Day socks. He got them uh, two days ago. And you stole them back. Yes, so they were very late and then he was not allowed to, well he tried them on so they do fit. These are the Wellesley socks by Kate Atherley from her book Custom Socks. They've got this nice cable pattern on the leg and on the top of the foot. And the other one, the cables go the other way. So they did it really properly and everything. Look, two ways of cables. Um, this is West Yorkshire Spinner's Blueberry Bonbon. And yeah, dad, they fit my dad's feet. He likes them. And, you know, I'm not probably going to knit him cable socks again because these were a right pain and two games. So, I hope he appreciates the cabled fantasticness for a long time to come because, you know, he will be getting plain socks for Christmas, I imagine. If I, you know, actually knit them in time. And then my other work, work in progress, my other finished <laughs> object is. Ta da! This, oh, I was going to look up the name of this shawl. Um, the name of this shawl will be in the show notes. It's a really simple garter stitch. Like the pattern is about three lines. But this is from a big ball of Sirdar colour wheel that Emily got me for Christmas yeah. last we'll year. <laughs> which I have, it's been my sort of have in my bag and knit at. Uh, rainbow and brownie events and then I was poorly a couple of weeks ago and it was just sort of like big needles knit 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 when I was feeling poorly knitting um so yeah this is a big shawl shawl well it's more like it's a big scarf shawl it's not a big short shawl because no yeah but it's, it's all rainbowy and pretty that it is and yeah I knit it on five millimeter needles 
I can be a bandit. Wear my horse. Um, where's the yellow bit? I've lost the yellow bit. Oh, it's over here. Um, yeah, so it's very colourful and rainbow and good. That's about all I have to say about that. Excellent. Cool. Right, I have, I did finish my dad's socks. He has them on his feet, I imagine. <clears throat> um, so he has those. I've got two pairs of socks. I did finish an opal pair of socks, but I don't remember which pair it was. But it was just, it was opal. It wasn't very exciting. Is it so, one of those on the floor? Though? Probably, yeah. But it's just this purple opal yarn. You all know what it looks like. It's not, it's not exciting. So this is the recent pair of socks that I finished a couple of days ago. They were done from the top down. Most of this, one of the legs, I don't know which one, was knit during insert day when we went back to school in September. <laughs> Meeting knitting. Um, and this is Dye Shack. Oh, where's the other one gone? I had it just now. Was it falling on the floor? Mm, pass. Oh, it's there. It's falling behind me. Right. So the main part, this orangey part, is Dye Shack Indian Summer. That's hair. Die check Indian summer. Da, da, da. You can see that. And then the yellow and orange bit was a mini, a mini skein, which is not named. But that's there from Die Shack, who's also a local localish, I think, dyer. And we got them from Alternate Universe, our lovely friend Kim's shop down in Cleve. Um and I bought them on two separate occasions, but I figured they'd go together quite nicely so this is my finished pair of kind of autumnally socks and now i've shown you them i might put them on my feet um so i finished this the other day and my other socks are these were a pair of tur no yes toe up socks and these i haven't got the ball bands but it's it's somerset yarns i think it's bubble gum they look a bit sort of saggy because i've worn them they're not like straight out of the wash so they're a bit stretched because they've been worn um and this is just a simple toe up sock. And these I knit most of during the summer when I was volunteering at my local library, doing the reading challenge. Um, so yeah, these were my knit in the library socks over the summer. I got a lot done, actually, as it happens. I got a lot of knitting done. Um, those are my two finished objects. I did block a shawl, which I think is behind me somewhere. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> I knit this probably well over a year ago. Ooh, My mail's just, just arrived, arrived, so that's nice. Um, and it was sat in Ros's house for ages, and then it was sat in my house for ages, and then yesterday I finally managed to block it. So I don't remember what the pattern is, and I don't remember what the yarns are. Isn't one of them coy? One of them's coy, I think it's that big one here, is coy. And then isn't one of that's them uh, Stephen King? Mm, yes, possibly that one. I don't remember. But it's, it's, I knit it a flipping age ago, it's just a crescent shawl, really. I knit it ages ago, but I finally blocked it because it's like, it's an autumn-y, halloween -y type colour. So I figured I should probably block it so I can at least wear it. Like this. Yeah, that's how you wear shorts. Definitely. So that's that one. Oh, look at us with our shawls as Um, and that's it. The only other stuff I've got to talk about is, um, something what have i got on there oh the christmas colorways and stuff but you talk about your spinning first okay you've got spinning as well oh i have it's over there somewhere i don't know what i've done with it okay well while, while i talk about my spinning why don't you go and get some of your spinning okay if i can find it we did tour de fleece months and months ago yeah. Yeah, we were part of the i've got some fiber in my mouth already uh alternate universe team uh so this year for the grand depart uh, we all took about 50 grams of fibre mm. to the shop and then they were split up into little bits according to how many people were there. So we had all had like mixtures of everything in a bat and then I made mine into roll eggs because I was being awkward. Um, and so there's, I have just over 50 grams of uh, ooh, chain plied oh. craziness. So there's, there's a lot of fibre in here. Um, it's mainly sort of greeny purple because there are a few greens and purple. 
<laughs> in it and I can't remember exactly what else there was but it's just yeah it was a fun fun um, thing to do to start the tour de fleece and I don't know that anybody else has spun those up so I don't I haven't seen how others have spun them because I imagine other people's are gonna look very different to mine some of them might be stripy or radiating colour or something. So that was the first thing I spun. Then Kim of Alternate Universe very kindly lent me her drum carder while we were there. So I did more carding than spinning this year. Why are we not becoming a scam? <laughs> this is just something has happened. <laughs> You've tangled yourself. Yes. Something very tangled. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> So I had some white alpaca and I drum carded it with a pack of rainbow bits from Alternate Universe. So I got a sort of pastel rainbow gradient. So it was from red through orange. The orange is very bright. Sort of shiny, a shiny fibre. So I think maybe bamboo or something. And then there's yellow, very pale green, uh, dark blue, and then finally purple. So that is about 75 grams of a two ply, I would say, roughly lace weight, maybe heavy lace weight. And I have more, I think I have two more bats and then a set of roll eggs to make more. So I don't know what I'm going to do with all the yarn when I finish spinning it. But I'm very pleased with my blending creation, my blended creation. What else did I spin for Tour de Fleece? Oh yes, I have, it's sort of a tradition of mine for Tour de Fleece that I spin some, um, Hulk B fibre, which is like a blend of fibre that Kim carries in her shop for, well, it's ideal for spinning into socks because it's uh, wool and nylon. But she only had 75 grams this year left in the shop, which she let me buy so that I could complete my spinning of the, the uh, Hulk B fibre. But I wanted to make it for socks and 75 grams of a mainly BFL blend isn't going to be enough for me to make a pair of socks. So I also bought, I think, 100 grams of just plain white BFL and then blended them together on the drum carder. So I have this. Is he going to focus, maybe? Is that in focus? I don't think that's in focus. Come on. I made a sock yarn. Please focus on it. Maybe that's in focus. So, yeah, it's... It, the Hulk B is a sort of purpley brown blend, but blending it with the white has taken all the brown out of it. So it's now just a white and purple sock yarn. And I think, I don't know what I'm going to knit with these, but some socks. Possibly some fancy cable socks. Because mm. I haven't learned my lesson. Well, for me though, so they will have no deadline. I can take my time. And then also during Tour de Fleece, I taught myself from a video on YouTube. Is that? That's not three fly. There we are. I taught myself how to do plying on the fly on my Turkish spindle, which basically means you. Well, I've got a Turkish spindle here. Let me get it out. You spin your single and then put it on the shaft of the spindle. And then when you've got enough single built up on the shaft, I probably have now. Uh, you take it off, wind it round your hand in a, it's called a butterfly, or you wind it around these two fingers, and then you three ply it in a chain ply and spin it the other way and then wrap it round the arms of the spindle here. So, this, if you can see, maybe it will focus. Come on. Maybe. Uh, this is single, and then this is three ply up here, down here. So I made myself a tiny, tiny skein 
of I have a bag of sort of bits and bobs from Hilltop Cloud so I don't know what is in the fibre. What is happening with my skeins? I've become very bad at skein. This is just a tiny tiny skein of three five. That is so not in focus. Focusing. No, we're focusing on my hand. Okay. Well, it's, it's a nice three ply for one of my first goes at plying on the fly. And I find when the way I wind my sing, the um, when I take them off, the little turtle thing that you're supposed to be able to ply from always sort of collapses in on itself. So I don't find that very helpful because then you have to spend hours untangling. A single and I usually spin quite fine so it's not that strong and it's quite tricky to untangle so this way allows me to sort of not have to deal with that problem so yes I'm very pleased I don't know what I'm going to do with this tiny tiny little bit but I imagine when I finish spinning all my little bits I might do something stripey maybe a scarf or a cowl or something so yeah that is that is my spinning lady cool all right let me just do this stitch and then i can show mine i've only got one bit which i did for tall fleece um and it's not had its bath yet so it's still a bit twirly whirly i think i need to reskein it really because it's all gone a bit a bit strange um this is a three ply it's three of the hilltop cloud ones that i don't remember the name of um but it's like i remember that a one. what are oh they? i didn't show my hilltop cloud spinning oh, okay. i can show you two of the colors of emily's thing <clears throat> one of them is pink which yeah. is this which is the merino and penduncle silk which did you find it any different to spin than any other kind of silk no really no i don't find it any different it was you know silky and then the other one is called hawaii mm. and this is merino silk and also a little bit of alpaca so i did those two and then i also did this the yellowy one which is called gold um, and I spun them together into a three ply. As I say, it's, it's a bit, there's a lot of it. There's, there's this and a whole other skein as well. Um, but I need to reskein it because it's gone all funny and twirly and it hasn't had its bath yet. So I think I will um, wind it back up on the skein, skein winder and then give it a bath. But that's, I can't remember how long it is. Yeah, look, you can tell it's not had its bath. But <laughs> um, you tried to make a sort of, thicker three ply didn't you so it's not that long yeah and um, but there's quite a lot of it i've got like yeah. a whole other skein and some little bits and pieces left so there is a fair whack but then it was three lots of fiber yeah which is quite a lot of fiber um so that's that's that was my only spinning and i have started some more spinning which is on my wheel but i didn't do very much over the summer once tour de fleece was finished mostly did knitting look at the state of that <laughs> Yeah, that's going to need to be rescaled because that's a bit of a nightmare. Um, that was my only spinning. However, I've got lots of stuff that I bought because, you know, I have a wool shop around the corner again yeah. now. So it's all down I just downhill from here. Right. Finish this. So oh, I spun, you still want to talk? Okay. I forgot to say these. I spun. These are from Hilltop Cloud. This is Munstead Wood, which is a merino linen and bamboo blend. And I spun all these uh, long draw from the fold. So they were really quick to spin. And I think I'm going to spin more of my Hilltop Cloud fibre. And then maybe do some kind of striped cardigan or something. Or maybe a blanket if I don't think I like wearing the collection of colours that I end up spinning. Right. That is the end. All right. Yes. Um, I've got mostly what I've bought from uh, the yarn shop is just bits and pieces of sock yarn. So they're not really interesting. They're just them. Um, what's it called? When it's not indie dyed. Commercially done. Yes, one. Um, so there's just bits and pieces of that. You'll see them as I knit them into socks. Um, but I will show you this one, which is this year's Christmas colourway from West Yorkshire Spinners. It's can't I can't remember the name. It's something to do with robins. I think it's called robin, possibly, because it's red and brown and all that sort of stuff. So it's like a robiny, a robin type colourway, which I like. So that's this year's. I still haven't finished last year's Christmas socks. They're still sitting Ooh. in a bag over there, so I might finish them before Christmas this year. And that's this year's colourway. Aha. 
Cool. Which is nice. It smells all sheepy. Yeah, it does. So, yeah, there you go. I think that's about it, isn't it? I pretty much. So. It's all been a bit all over the place because it's been summer and then it's been, you know, work and la 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 la. But as we get into um, the colder weather, we'll probably start doing a lot more nitty type things because the weather's colder. Yes. Let's hope it's not going to be a I have to, I have to stay inside it more. four or five month break before we podcast again. Hopefully not. But we are still here. We're still alive. Yes. Hello. Um, we haven't gone anywhere. We, uh, oh yeah. And hopefully it'll get uploaded like within the next month. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Today is the 23rd of go. October. You've now held yourself accountable by so, saying what day we're filming this on. This so should if be this up. is, if you're watching this and it's just been uploaded and it's like December the 15th. Blame me. Because I didn't upload it. I, I will try my very best. That's the wrong hand. It is the wrong try hand. My also, very I best. can't do that anymore. Oh, that's sad for you. Oh, well, it's and good. I was a brownie and a guide and everything. Yeah, I'm still involved in guiding, so it's good that of the two <laughs> of us... Practice. I can I never know. be on the Hunger Games. Yeah. <laughs> it's good that of the two of us are the one that can still do it. Yeah. Um, I had a rainbow bake, I promised yesterday. It was very sweet. Oh, that's nice. She brought us celebrations. Oh, good. Well, I'm assuming her parents brought us celebrations and she was getting... <laughs> to to give the us. same rainbow... Is this the same as the brownie promise? No. Oh, it's, okay. I promise that I will do my best to think about my beliefs and to be kind and helpful. Oh, I changed it. Yeah, because it used to be about... To do my duty to God. It yeah. Used to be. And now not... They recognise it. Have, every... have they changed that in the brownie one as well? Yeah. I think they've changed it in all of them. Because okay. you now don't have to believe in a God to be... Do you have to do stuff to serve the Queen? Um, I think you do in the other promises. Okay. Not in the rainbow. No. Rainbows don't have to serve the queen. As soon as you become like eight, then then they, you know you have to think have about to the queen and your community. The queen. Yeah, serve the queen and help other people, and to keep the brownie guide law. I seem yes. to remember. Anyway, yeah, yeah, you um, don't have to keep the brownie guide law if you're not a brownie. No. What's the brownie guide law? Do you remember? Uh, brownie does a good turn every brownie day. Brownie thinks of others before herself and does a good turn every okay. day. Okay, I got it the wrong way around. 1989. I was a brownie, boys and girls. Right. <clears throat> Anyway, on that note. Yes, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for watching. We shall um, see you hopefully in the not too distant future for episode 33. Look, we've got a pegboard. Mm, good night. Cool. Marvellous. We will see you soon. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Bye bye. Doo -doo -doo.